All right. Well, welcome. We're going to do a quick tutorial on functions. We're going to explain the concept of a function in this first one and how we can apply it um, algebraically, numerically, and to real life. Um, we're going to try to also differentiate between a function equation and also be able to justify our answer. And we're going to talk about function notation and all that cool jazzy neat stuff. All right, so let's first start out with this. What is What are functions? Well, the big idea to understanding a function is there's a direct relationship between the domain, which is the inputs of something, and the range, which is the outputs of something. And that can be applied in many different instances, algebraically, graphically, numerically, and you can talk about it verbally. Your book talks about this, and what I think about it is a yin and yang, the relationship between domain and the range. So let's find out what this means a little bit more. Well, in your book, or most textbooks, in the book that we use, on page 16, the definition of function says this. A function f from a set A to set B is a relation that assigns to each element x in the set A exactly one element y in set B. All right, now when we refer to this, a lot of people, a lot of students read, read this and like, what are we talking about? Well, a set is a grouping. All right, so we're talking about a grouping from A and a grouping from B. Okay, and there's a relationship between them. And what this relationship entails, according to this definition, is that each element, element means um, property or a value or thing inside set A, there's exactly one that's in relationship to the one in set B, and that element is Y. That could be a number, generally think about it numbers, but it could really be much, pretty much anything. Now, what does this mean? Well, in fewer terms, or not as specific, the set A is the domain, or a set of inputs of a function F, and the set B contains the range, or set of outputs. Okay? So, we think of this as another word of saying this is the definition in our own words, or in my words, is I say this. For every input, for every input, so that would be element in X, exactly one, one output, all right, or element of Y. So, input, exactly one output. And that's me with the good bit. Much of that you want. <laughs> all right, a little humor for you. All right, so how does this apply in all the different things that we talked about? Well, over here I have a diagram. And that's what I'm referring to as over here. And what we have is, for example, for every element in set A, there's exactly one corresponding element in set B. For every element in that is the input, there's exactly one that is going to be the output. All right, these are just different ways of saying the same thing. For every element in all right, x, there is actually one element of y, or which is known as f of x. For every element in the domain, there's actually one element in the range. Okay, domain and then the range. The range is the outputs, the y value. For every element in the independent variable, I'm going to put variable here, okay, there is one corresponding element in the dependent variable. All of these terms say the same thing. And most students, when they look at this, they don't understand, well, what's the input? What's the x? What's the domain? What's the independent variable? Well, it's the same thing. You can just reform in different ways. All right? And what's the output? What's the f of x? What's the range? What's the dependent variable? Well, that's your set B. All right? That's what corresponds to set A. Well, let's look a little bit closer. To a broader context, if you look at this one, all right, here are some metaphors. Okay, here are some metaphors. And we'll go one at a time. I love this metaphor. All right, and well, the question is, how do you determine if a relationship is a function? Okay, we talk about this function relationship. So for every input, there's one output. Okay, now which one is X a function? Well, let me, well, let's think about this. All right, let's say you have children that walk into a candy store, and each is only able to purchase one piece of candy. Now, you think about this, we first have to divide it up into what is our domain and what is our range. Okay, the domain 
you think about it, is our inputs. Well, what's the input in this metaphor? Well, it appears that the children are the domain. So all the children that walk into the candy store, all right, so every single child is the domain. That's our set A. Well, what do they get? Well, they are only able to purchase one piece of candy. So what is the range? Well, what you get out. So each child walks in, you get out one piece of candy, or the pieces of candy, you could say, of candy. That is our range. Okay, so is this a function? Well, it appears to be because for every child, you get one piece of candy. So yes, this is a function. For every input, there's one output. This one applies to our schools. Little pens. If your domain is set is a little pen conference, then the range would be the set of schools in the conference. Okay, well, the domain is the little pen conference. All right, so that meaning the domain would be the conference itself. Okay, and the range is all the other conference members, and the, this is the little pen, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. All right, nine conference members, so this would actually be the range, would be all the different all right, schools in the conference. Well, for the conference, which is one, you get nine outputs. Well, that is not a function relationship because it goes one to nine. And remember, a function is for every input, you get one output, okay, one output. So no, this is not a function, not a function. One conference, nine outputs, not good, all right? Every one input, get one output. All right, one more example, and then we'll call it a day. Now, how do you determine if a relationship is a function numerically? Well, if you look at this, let's say we have an ordered pair where x and y represents y as a function of x. So y as a function of x. So when we have this, y as a function of x, x is our input because that is what we're making it of something y is our output. So if we write this, y equals f of x. And y equals f of x, our x and y value. Now an order pair, we should have for every input, we should have one output. So if we look at this, we see input negative 5, output negative 9. Negative 4 is 0, negative 4, negative 5. Uh-oh. Since the input is used twice, okay, this is not a function. This one, we have negative 5, negative 9. Yes, that is. For every input, there is one output. This one, we see that negative 5, negative 5. There's more than one right here. So that means this one is no. And D, these are inputs, but do they have outputs? The answer is no, because remember, for every input, you need to have one output. So this one is no, because there is no values that are associated with it. Because remember, it has to be a relationship. Functions are relationships. Relay, relation, yep, okay, between an input and output. So, to summarize, what do we have here? Well, for every input, there's one output. So a function, like I said before, is a relation between an input and output. And this relationship is for every input. All right. There is only one output. And that relationship we see everywhere. Okay? Well, hopefully this helps you out in understanding relations and what functions are entailed. It's that metaphorical relationship between inputs and outputs. We one set A and set B, where we get for every input function that we have associated with one output. All right, we'll have some more slides in a little bit.